So today I'm going to be bringing you a haul update. Now, a few months back, maybe two or three months back, I did a haul that included high-end products as well as drugstore products that I purchased from Ulta, and I wanted to go ahead and update you on my thoughts. So I have organized this video in three categories. I have first products that I love slash repurchases, and then I have products that I like, but I'm not sure if I will repurchase. And then I also have products that I just downright regret purchasing, which is lame, but hey, it happens. So I thought I would give you my thoughts and maybe it might help you in case you were wondering about these products and whether or not to purchase them. So let's go ahead and get started because I do have quite a lot of products. So now we will go ahead and start with the first category, which are my loves slash repurchases. And the first product that I wanted to talk about, I don't have with me because I have used it up. And that is the Aveeno Hydrating Gel Cleanser. I truly love this cleanser and I definitely have it on my list to buy the next time I go to the store. I do like having that Aveeno cleanser as backup just in case I do have some sensitivity to a makeup product and then that is like my go-to cleanser because I know it's gonna soothe my skin and I know that it doesn't cause any irritation whatsoever. So it's kind of my fallback cleanser and I just want it in my collection again. I definitely recommend it if you have sensitive skin as I do because I don't think that it is um, strong enough, if you will, to take off all my makeup and then cleanse my skin. So I definitely like it because I do double cleanse, but again, it's gentle and I love it for that. I don't fault it for that whatsoever. All right, so the next product in this love category is from Becca, and it is the Chloe and Malika palette. And I will go ahead and remind you that in that first haul video, I did do swatches of that. I'm not going to do that here because it's just going to take too long. But if you're curious, um, you know, you can definitely check out that first video. But anyway, this palette, I absolutely love. And I think that it was kind of um, a palette that I used for the first time and knew that I liked it because I used it. And my skin just looked so nice and it wasn't too much, you know? It's just a really great, great palette and I actually purchased a backup, which is so stupid, I understand. But it was at a great price and this is limited edition so it's not gonna be around forever. I think that they still are selling it. So if you were thinking about it, I highly recommend it. I think it's so beautiful. I am so stoked to have this in my collection. When I pick this palette up, my skin is going to look amazing and just so natural and beautiful. And the colors have, you know, like a shimmer to them, but it's definitely not glittery. It's kind of like what I think hourglass powders are like. I don't own any hourglass powders, not at the moment anyway, but... Um, I mean, it's beautiful, highly recommend. Okay, so next is another palette, but it's an eyeshadow palette, and this is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Sultry palette. Didn't think that I wanted this palette whatsoever because it just looks like a basic palette, right? Very boring or whatnot, but it has become one of my favorites in my collection. Just like with the Becca palette, I know that if I pick it up, the looks that I have are gonna be amazing. This is just such a beautiful, cool toned palette. You definitely have all the staples that you need on an everyday basis to make just a beautiful look. And when I'm wearing a red lip and I want something, you know, subtle yet still beautiful, um, I will pull this one out and it's just, it's so much fun to play with. I definitely don't regret this purchase whatsoever. And I know that you can find it at like TJ Maxx right now. Um, Highly recommend. All right, so I did purchase two Too Faced bronzers because they were on sale. And the first one I have here is going to be the Sweethearts bronzer. It is a shimmery bronzer, which I don't use on an everyday basis. I definitely prefer matte products, but when I do wear this, it gives such a beautiful glow to the skin that I very much love it. I got it, I think for 50% off um, during the 21 Days of Beauty sale. And I think it's so amazing and it was definitely a steal for, you know, the $15 that I paid for it. So, so very nice. I think the only complaint I have is the bulky packaging, but you know, other than that, it's a really beautiful product and I think it just glides on so nicely on the skin and it's nearly effortless. I am all for those kind of products. And the other bronzer that I have, I actually have it in, well, I can take it out now. I had it in the packaging because I had a deluxe size of this, um, which I just used up in my project pan. 
spoiler alert, but this is the Milk Chocolate Soleil Bronzer, also from Too Faced. Now, this is a really nice bronzer. It almost looks like nothing in the pan, but on my fair skin, I think it complements it so well without being harsh, you know? I think it blends out nicely. It's beautiful. It smells like chocolate, which I thought at first it would irritate my sensitive skin, but I have grown to love it, and I don't think that it lasts you know, um, throughout the day I'm not smelling it or anything. So that doesn't bother me whatsoever. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, it's definitely an oldie, but a goodie. And I am going to actually put this full size now in my collection since I liked it so much that I finished a deluxe size. So glad to have this one. Definitely a love. Another product that I love is from Wet n Wild, which pretty much translates to being really affordable compared to like most items at the drugstore, you know? <laughs> and this is their Mega Cushion Foundation. I really, really love this foundation because it's so lightweight, but it offers so much coverage and it always surprises me when I put it on. And I love that it feels like you have nothing on your skin. And even though I have combo oily skin, it lasts so beautifully, it wears so gracefully, and to get that for less than $10 at the drugstore, I am very happy, and I definitely will be repurchasing it for as long as they sell it. So happy with it, and if you ever do have any of these like cushion foundations, and they go dry it seems, just flip over the cushion and there is a ton more product on the bottom, so in case you didn't know. Very nice product. I love it. I wish it were in a lighter shade because this is in the shade Light Ivory, but it's still not light enough for me. As soon as I bronze and whatnot, it's fine, but that would be my only complaint with this is the shade range. All right, continuing with the loves, this is one of my favorite highlighters in my collection, and it's from a brand that not everyone talks about a ton, which is unfortunate, but this is from Lorac, and it is their Light Source Mega Beam Highlighter in the shade Celestial. So I initially purchased this one because there was a YouTuber that I watched, um, Spooky Lips and Fat Hips, and she mentioned that this swatched exactly like the Anastasia Beverly Hills Omrezy highlighter, which I missed out on, unfortunately. That's okay, life goes on. But I was very much interested, and I have always liked Lorac powders, especially their blushes. Like when I think of my favorite Lorac product, I'm gonna say the blush. They just blend so beautifully. And I think this is such an amazing, amazing highlighter. I look forward to using it. And when I pick it up, I'm excited about it. And I think in my collection, there should be more products like that. You know, if something doesn't excite me, I shouldn't have it in my collection. I'm learning and I'm progressing with that. It's difficult, but it's definitely possible. And this is an item that I love having in my collection. I know I said I wanted to swatch anything, but it just, look at that. I mean, it just glistens and I barely put product on my finger, but it's so beautiful. I think this celestial um, shade complements my skin rather nicely. It's definitely like a really light golden shade, but I don't think it's too harsh because with fair skin, I personally um, try to steer away from like the yellowy goldy type of highlighters just because they just can be too harsh on my skin, in my opinion. If you can rock them, do it. But anyway, I really enjoy this product and I wish more people knew about it or I wish more people talked about it, I should say. Really great. All right, so now I have two primers that I am so happy that I purchased. I have talked about it so many times on my channel, but this is the Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer. I really enjoy this one. I don't think that it's too heavy for my skin. I use it in the morning and I don't put any other moisturizers on with it. I don't use any other primer. This is just a two-in-one for me. And I really do think on some days when you just need to hurry up and go, products like these are helpful, you know, because you don't need that extra product. It, it just helps all in all. And my foundations lay so beautifully on top of this. I really enjoy it and I will continue to repurchase it. Another primer is from Flower Beauty. It's their In Your Prime Hydrating Primer. So I just used up um, a Laura Mercier Hydrating Primer, again, in my project pan. <laughs> and I find that this is quite similar to it in the way that it's kind of like that lotion-y type primer. Really, really nice. And just like with the Smashbox primer, I really like how my foundations lay on top of it. I don't think that it makes my foundation slip and slide everywhere due to the hydration. It's just really nice. It's thin, it's lightweight, 
and I really do recommend it. A concealer that I have been loving is from L'Oreal Paris. It's their Infallible Full Wear Concealer. I do have it in the shade 320 Porcelain. This has become one of my favorite concealers to pick up. Now, mind you, I don't have a ton of concealers in my collection, um, and I actually just did like a foundation concealer declutter slash makeup collection video. And I got rid of a few concealers, but I definitely knew that I was going to hang on to this one. I definitely like the shade of it. And, you know, it's it's light, but it's not too light. And it gives a really great medium coverage, but it doesn't look heavy under my eyes, which I can definitely appreciate. So this is a great concealer and I kind of want to try it in like a, a deeper shade to maybe contour with. I think this formula would be pretty nice to do that with, so I might try that in the future. Either way, for my under eyes, I very much like it and have been enjoying it. So a really great purchase in my opinion. So now another concealer that was repurchased, so I already knew that I loved it, is from Ulta Beauty. It's their full coverage liquid concealer. Now I have said before that you don't get a ton of product in this. This is 0 0.08 fluid ounces and that L'Oreal Infallible is 0.33. So you get a ton more and these are pretty similar in price. What I do is I actually just purchase when Ulta has their beauty collection buy to get to. That's when I do purchase these along with like their brow products and whatnot. But um, this is in the shade Fair Cool. I will definitely continue to repurchase it. I like to keep this one in my bag because it's like the perfect touch-up concealer. I oftentimes get really watery eyes and when I rub or dab my tissue, my concealer will come off sometimes. So this is a really great touch-up because it's so thin, yet it definitely gives you coverage. So I really enjoyed that. So now talking about the Ulta Beauty brow products, I forgot that I purchased um, this one in this specific haul, but this is their brow tint in the shade Deep. And it has like a wand that's similar to the Benefit, is it Give Me Brow? Um, really, really nice. I do love that Benefit one, but it's so much more expensive than this. And I find that this one is so easy to use. It doesn't feel sticky. I very much love this one. And again, when, you know, Ulta has their buy to get to, it's such a great sale to take advantage of that I will continue to repurchase this one. I've heard the Essence brow product that's similar to this, you know, with that little brush that you comb through is really nice and similar to the Benefit one as well. I do want to try that one, but this one is such a solid keeper that I might repurchase this again right after I use it up. So we will see. But either way, I'm so glad that I tried this one out because I'm very impressed with their brow products. I also um, purchased their like micro pencil. I don't think it's called a micro pencil. It's just their brow pencil, but it has that micro tip to it, you know, and it's really, really nice. And I am impressed that I liked these Ulta products as much as I did. And I will continue to repurchase. So these pencils are from Nude Sticks. And these two are the Lip and Cheek pencils in the shade Ripe and Purity for the Intense Matte, which is Purity. Purity is an intense matte. I really like that because when I put it on as a blush, I know it's going to stay put. So I'm not mad at it, you know. But... I do find that I need to put on like a balm or whatever. It is what it is, you know, but they're still really beautiful. The shade Ripe is such a beautiful like summer shade. So I definitely have been liking that quite a lot. I also purchased like the Royal Affair. I believe it was like the Royal Affair palette. Well, they call it a palette, but it was like a Royal Affair kit. And it came with all of these shades. It has, let's see, it has Stiletto. Royal, Smoke, Lilith, and Vintage. So it had all these shades in it. And then Smoke and Lilith are eyeshadows, which are really nice. Um, I think Lilith is really pretty. I don't find anything like exciting about it. I have been liking Smoke as an eyeliner and it's really easy to smudge out. It's so beautiful, but it's like a dark gray rather than like a black. So it doesn't come off extremely intense, you know, if I want a really light eye look, it's perfect. Um, Lilith, like I said, is kind of underwhelming. I tried to use it as a highlighter, inner corner highlight. There's nothing 
amazing about it but I still want to use it up you know and then you have the lip colors which are stiletto vintage and royal I think they're really nice I think vintage is one of my favorites because it's such a unique color at least in my collection you know and I think it definitely pairs well with the the shades of eyeshadow that it came with so I think the palette was very well curated definitely not mad at the price that I got it at and if you are looking to try Nude Sticks products, I would definitely say go with like the packages slash palettes that they have because the value of it is so, so good, usually. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm very happy with these Nude Stick products. I think they're so very easy to use and I'm just in love with them, which is why they're in the love category. Duh. So moving on to that middle category, which are products that I like, I don't love, but I am not mad to be using them up. So I will tell you the reasons why as we go through each product. And now first we have a palette and this is from Smashbox. It's their Kelly Contour Palette. Now I really, really do like this palette and I actually took it on a trip with me once upon a time. I used this shade right here um, as kind of like an all over setting powder, which was super easy because it was one less product to carry on my trip. These highlighters right here in the middle are a little too dark for me. So I did just pop those on my eyes. I used these bronzier shades for like a crease color. And then this blush is really beautiful. Now, this isn't in my love category only because these highlights aren't bright enough. I really have always liked Smashbox powders, so I'm definitely not mad at that. But I think I'm just a little bit bitter that these highlights aren't just like wham in your face highlights. You know, they're just, they're subtle. But a lot of people like subtle highlights, which is, which is okay, you know? Like here's one of them here and that is the lighter shade but it's not light enough for me and my fair skin i mean as you can see i mean look at it compared to that celestial highlight from lorac on top it's just there's just a world of difference and i i want this and sometimes i want this but for an all-in-one product this isn't it for me i will definitely try to use it up you know as best as i can might take a while but it's still it's beautiful i think it's such an easy palette to use Therefore, it's in my light category and not in my regret category. I hope that makes sense. All right, so moving on to another powder. This is from Beauty Bakery. This is their flower setting powder. I really have been liking this one a lot. I don't think that it mattifies as much as I personally love, but I got it um, half off at the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty sale, and I think that it was worth the, I think, $12.50 that I purchased it for. I don't think I would pay the $24 that it originally cost. It's still really beautiful. The packaging is really nice and it feels, you know, really weighted. I enjoy that quite a bit. I think it's a great powder. I don't think it's an amazing powder. I definitely prefer my Too Faced Peach Loose Powder over this, but it's still really nice. I'm happy to use it up. So that's why it's in that middle category. So now a skin product that I nearly used up is from number seven. It's their Radiant Results Nourishing Cleansing Balm. And here you go, almost done with this one. So I don't hate this one, but it's in my light category. Like I'm not mad that I'm using this up. Um, you know, I don't find that it breaks me out, which is the biggest plus you can have, you know, <laughs> especially with sensitive skin. So I think it's nice. Um, it does have a fragrance to it, but I don't think it's offensive whatsoever. But that is just a personal preference. Um, things that I think smell nice. Maybe someone else might hate, you know, vice versa. But either way, I'm glad to use it up. I think I'll repurchase it like if I were in Ulta and I needed a cleansing balm. But I do have a deluxe sample of the Kopari um, Coconut Cleansing Balm. So I'm excited to use that up. This was still good. It was still a like. I'm not mad that I purchased it. All right, so now we have two MAC Prep and Prime setting sprays. And this is in the shade, not the shade, <laughs> this is in the scent Coconut and this is Lavender. So I know that I love MAC Prep and Prime, right? I know that I love the spray. I have a couple of the original sprays. These were on sale during that Ulta 21 Days of Beauty and I didn't know if I wanted the Coconut or the Lavender, so naturally I got both, right? I think the coconut smells really nice. It's definitely not a strong scent whatsoever. Previous to having this coconut one, I had the Smashbox 
uh, it was like coconut chill, coconut and chill, something like that. It was like a, a limited edition one and it smelled so good. It smelled like summer. Um, I thought this might smell the same, but it doesn't. It's definitely a lot more subtle, but maybe more people would appreciate that fact. I can barely smell this when I put it on. Um, I do, you know, shake it up beforehand, can barely smell it, but that's still okay because it still works like a great setting spray. So not mad at that. The lavender one, I definitely don't love. Um, I like it. Definitely won't repurchase it. So I don't, but I don't think it's a regret because it still, you know, performs well. I don't find that the scent lingers, which is all I can ask for. So not mad at it, but wouldn't repurchase this one. Okay, so I only have two more products left for this middle of the road category. Now this here is from It Cosmetics. It's their Bye Bye Lines Foundation. Got this on a sale. I do like this one more than the CC Cream only because it has um, more of a coverage and I think it's a lot more friendly to my combo oily skin. So I definitely like it. Um, but when I put it on, my skin looks nice. But I think this just comes down to preference. Like I really do like a full coverage foundation on most days. Majority of the days, give it to me all, you know? But it's just a foundation that I think my skin looks really nice, but there's nothing amazing about it, you know? It's just... It's just a like product and I'll be happy to use it up and maybe, you know, I'll put it in a project pan one day and use it consistently and find more reasons to like it, maybe even love it. But as of now, I'm going to put this in this middle of the road category in my likes and just leave it there, you know? It's it's still good, don't regret it. All right, so the last product I have for this category is from ColourPop. It is their So Juicy Plumping Gloss and this is in the shade For the Clout. Now, this is in this category because it simply is just a like. There's nothing amazing that I found about this. I don't put it on and think, oh my gosh, my lips look amazing. And I don't think that I am a fan of these applicators. I just, I don't know, I think I would prefer more of a doe foot applicator. But I'm going to use this one up. I'm, I think I'm really relieved that I didn't buy a ton of these and I just bought one <laughs> so that I could try it out because I'm just... I'm okay with it. It's it's fine in my collection. Definitely won't be decluttering it or anything, but um, I don't know. It just didn't wow me. That's all. And I don't feel that it's plumping either, which I'm okay with because I don't like that tingly feeling of plumping lip glosses. If I were, you know, in the market for a plumping lip gloss, I would have been pretty, pretty let down. Either way, um, it's in my collection. It was just an okay, okay product. I lied. So I do have one more item for this like category and this is a perfume. This is from KKW and this is the Crystal Gardenia perfume. I really do love the scent of this and the bottle is actually really cool. The reason why it's in this category is because I don't feel like the scent lasts and I feel like I have to use more than I should especially for like a $65 perfume. And I did buy two of these because they were on sale and I had a 20% off discount. If I had paid $65 for this perfume, I think I would have regretted it because like I said, it just doesn't last long. Um, it doesn't give me a headache, which is nice. Like for instance, the Chanel perfumes, you know how they're really concentrated and they last forever. Um, they tend to give me a headache. But I think this one's nice. It kind of just disappears. And I'm like, hey, I, you know, I made effort. I put on perfume today. I just want to smell like I did. That's all. So I do have quite a few items for my regret. There are three products here that I don't have with me. So I will go ahead and put pictures up here. And I'll go through them quickly. Because I regretted purchasing them for really obvious reasons to me anyway. Um, so the first one is an Essence Mattifying Primer. I really liked this one, but it broke me out like crazy. The scent of it was so strong. I think it definitely did mattify my face just like I wanted it to. So I think if you don't have sensitive skin, you might really like it. And the price point was like 4 or $5. It was so inexpensive. So I think, again, if you don't have sensitive skin, you might really like it. But my skin... Hated it. Next up from Essence is their Brighten Up Banana Powder. Now this, again, was just a personal reason. It made my under eyes so itchy and I don't know why. But, um, you know, for my fair skin, I thought it was a really nice banana powder because I tend to not be able to use those kind of powders just because they're so yellow and they make me look just ill. <laughs> but this one was really nice. If you don't have sensitive skin, I would recommend it because it was thin and it laid nicely, but 
just didn't work out. So now the third product that I actually decluttered almost immediately after I tried it um, is the Maybelline Fit Me Foundation and I had bought it in the shade Porcelain. I actually finished up a bottle of this years back and I thought I remembered loving it. Maybe my skin just changed, but it looked so heavy. First it looked beautiful, but it just it didn't have lasting power. And I think I just have better foundations to compare it to now. I think maybe that might be it. <laughs> the reason why I don't love it now, today. But either way, I immediately decluttered and mm, wah wah wah. So now I have, let's see, three more products that I disliked and regretted. So now these are from e.l.f. It's their 16 hour camo concealer and I don't particularly regret purchasing this product. I just regret purchasing these shades. This shade range, these are just, um, they're so deceiving. So now the shades that I have are medium peach and fair warm and they are just not the right shade for me. I have found that fair beige suits my skin a lot better. So those are the only reasons I have. So if you have a tester at the store, do test it, walk around a little bit, and then see if it's your right shade because they do not look like this once dried down. So just a heads up. And now we have this Laura Geller Spackle Mist Restore with coconut water. I really do like what's in this bottle. I don't like the bottle. Like it just spurts. And once I use a different setting spray up, I might just Put that in that bottle so that the mist is fine but there were times where I was trying to spray this and it just clogged up but either way they don't sell this at Ulta any longer which is why I got it at like a deep discount I think it was like 50% off it's really nice it has a nice gentle coconut smell kind of just like that Mac fix plus um, but I just this darn bottle I would have been pretty let down if I would have purchased this at full price with this crappy bottle either way good product bad packaging. That's why I regret it. Okay, so we made it to the last regret product. This is from Dose of Colors and it is their lipstick in the shade Brulee. I don't see specifically which lipstick it is, but I'm going to have everything listed down below for you. So the formula of this is really nice, right? I think the shade of it is really beautiful. Um, Again, it's in Brulee. Really like it. What I hate about this product is is that this doesn't wind down. So when you put the cap back on, you have to be so careful. And I have already gotten lipstick around it, so that annoys me and I don't wanna take it with me anywhere because of that fact. And that might be so petty, but honestly, if I would have paid $17 for this, I would have been really ticked off. I think I got this half off during the Ulta sale. It's annoying and I don't think I'll ever purchase a dose of colors lipstick like this in this specific packaging. Only because the packaging. If you don't care about that, you don't mind scraping your lipstick, <laughs> then I mean by all means. It's a, it's a nice formula but there's nothing amazing about it to make it worth my while. Anyway, that is the video you guys. Thank you so much for sticking around with me. I know these videos do tend to get long but I want to let you know all my feelings because I have a lot of feelings. <laughs> anyway, go ahead and have a great day and feel free to subscribe if you feel like because I will have another Ulta haul coming up. Stay awesome, be kind, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!